Tammy was born on the 10th of August 1968. At the time of her disappearance, she was just 15 years old. Tammy was last seen at Eldon High School at approximately 7.45 a.m. on May the 16th, 1984. The school is just across the street from her house in Eldon, Missouri. Her mother's living boyfriend, Martin Dean Priest, said she didn't go inside the building and he pulled up on the curb to find out where she was going. Tammy supposedly told him she was going to skip school and meet friends at Rock Island Park, and Priest said he offered to take her there. She was last seen getting into a blue Plymouth outside the school. Tammy never attended classes that day and has never been heard from again. Her family reported her missing that afternoon. Four years earlier, on June the 15th, 1980, the body of 12-year-old Tonya Lee Lewis, a student at the Nevada Middle School, was found floating on a farm pond about 11 miles south of the city by two men who had gone fishing. Initially, the cause of death couldn't be determined, but the authorities nevertheless treated the case as a suspected homicide. At the time, Marty Priest was part of a painting crew and was working in the Lewis household when he overheard a conversation between Tonya and a friend who were planning on visiting a pool. Marty excused himself from his job and went to see Tonya, allegedly making arrangements for the two of them to play basketball later. After Lewis failed to return home, her mother Shirley questioned Martin about the disappearance, but he explained that after he left their supposed game, he went home and stayed there all night. On March the 5th, 1981, Priest was convicted of Lewis's murder and sentenced to 25 years in prison. He filed for retrial twice, but both motions were denied. In 1983, Martin filed another retrial, but this time successfully received an acquittal. Since no cause of death could be determined, there was no conclusive proof that she hadn't died accidentally, and thus he was released. Tammy's mother, Sandra, stated that initially, after Tammy's disappearance, Priest suggested she had run away and offered to help put up missing persons posters for her. Later, however, he told her he had Tammy and that she would only ever see her daughter again through him. Sandra went to the police and told them about this and they told her to start keeping a diary of what Priest said in case he revealed information that could lead her to her daughter. Sandra maintained her relationship with Priest for a time in hopes of finding Tammy but eventually cut off contact with him. On November the 16th 1984 15-year-old Katrina Cheeley mysteriously vanished after leaving for Allison Junior High School in Wichita, Kansas. Her partially decomposed nude body was discovered by a farmer on February the 28th, 1985, after he decided to inspect what his dog had barked at for the last month. She was positively identified as Cheeley from a school book and a ring she was wearing. The forensic examiner determined she'd been asphyxiated, but hadn't been sexually assaulted. Martin Priest and Katrina's mother, Linda Hall, had met in 1984, shortly after the former moved to Wichita. Hall described her new boyfriend as a very nice person, and noted that on the day of their daughter's disappearance, Martin was at the home. Katrina was running late for school, and he had offered her a ride there. According to testimony from Martin's fourth wife, Deborah Yoder, he bragged to her that he had driven around the neighbourhood and then tried to molest Katrina. When she resisted, he strangled her. On December the 27th, 28th, two bodies were found to the northwest part of Wichita. Both victims had been shot, which led to speculation that the deaths were related. 
The male victim, 25-year-old William Mayhew, was found in a ditch near the Arkansas River with a single gunshot wound to the head. The following day, 33-year-old Frieda Bailiff was discovered dead at the home the couple shared. She had been strangled to death. Both were last seen by relatives on Christmas. In March 1985, Martin Priest, who was serving time for theft, posted bond and went under the radar. Hours after his release, new evidence collected from an obtained firearm, a 32 caliber pistol, pointed towards his guilt in the Mayhew bailiff slayings. On April the 30th, Priest was arrested. After a few month long trial, Priest was convicted of killing Mayhew but acquitted in bailiff's death. He received a mandatory life sentence with eligibility for parole in 15 years. In 1987, Debra Yoder, Priest's fourth wife, told the police she had received Chile's bracelet as a birthday present from him. This was considered enough evidence to charge Martin with the girl's death, but in a shocking turn of events, he was found not guilty on December the 12th. In January 2016, while still incarcerated in Kansas, Priest was charged with Tammy's murder. A witness, Priest's 13-year-old nephew, David Nicholas, was present in the car at the time. He was friends with Tammy and had a crush on her. He kept secret what he had seen for decades because he wanted to protect his mother and older brother, who also knew about the crime. He came forward with his story after his mother passed away. David testified against his uncle at Priest trial in 2018. He said he was riding in the car with Priest when they saw Tammy smoking outside the school. Priest pulled over and had his nephew convince Tammy to get her into the car. She seemed nervous and David didn't understand why. When they stopped to use the bathroom, Tammy tried to run, but Nicholas convinced her to come back to the car. At some point in the journey, Priest said he knew Tammy and David were boyfriend and girlfriend. He told Tammy to get into the back seat of the car and told her she and David should have sex. There was sexual abuse within the family and David had previously had sex in front of family members. He and Tammy did what Priest told them to do and afterwards Tammy got back into the front seat of the car. Priest then dropped something on the floorboard on Tammy's side and asked her to pick it up and when she bent over to do so he struck her on the head with a wrench knocking her unconscious and began to rape her. David tried to stop his uncle but Priest hit him. At some point Tammy woke up and said no but Priest wouldn't stop and ultimately strangled her to death. With Tammy's body in the car, Priest drove to David's mother's house. He and David didn't speak to each other. They took Tammy's body into a back bedroom, but other family members discovered her. David's older brother, Michael Nicholas, testified about this, describing how their mother screamed and yelled at Priest when she found out what had happened. No one, however, called the police, and there was a decision to hard Tammy's body. Martin returned that night in a truck with a barrel and tools, and made David come with him. They put Tammy's body in the barrel, dumped it into a depression, and covered it with dirt. David later tried to lead police to the spot, but a search turned up nothing. Priest maintained his innocence and his defence argued that his nephews were liars and pointed to their extensive criminal records as adults. He was nevertheless convicted of Tammy's murder and sentenced to life in prison. <laughs>